Hi folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. You're not going to believe what I did yesterday. Might think, might think it's somewhat foolish, but I went and got another boat. This is ridiculous. It's, it's a problem, I'll admit. I can't get myself over it, but, but, I went and picked this thing up yesterday. It was about two hours from my house. It was a hundred dollars for the boat. It has a 140 horse Mercruiser motor and trailer, the easy loader trailer. It all has a lot of age on it, I get that. But there is some salvage here. I'm confident there's some salvage here. So what I'm gonna do is take you through a quick process on what you need to do when you go and pull a boat home from a long distance away. Uh, you gotta prepare yourself. You gotta make sure you carry spare tires. You make sure you carry wrenches that will, uh, a lug wrench that will fit those tires and those lug nuts. And you gotta take along a uh, spare tire, that helps too. Thank God I did. I'm going to show you some interesting stuff about this guy. Now the worst nightmare about getting something like this home is the fact that the tires are going to be old. Never trust the tires. They might get you down the road, get you out of the driveway or wherever you're taking it from, but they may not get you all the way home. And I'll show you why. Now what I took was my impact, a breaker bar, half inch breaker bar, and a set of sockets. I know I can fit every lug nut out there with those set of sockets. And I took a jack. Actually, I didn't take a jack. I used the jack that came with that was in my vehicle. That worked just fine. Uh, and I'm going to show you why you need to do that. Pow! This is the tire that was off the passenger side of the trailer. We were going down the highway. And, and I, I left the place... And I knew the tires were weather checked pretty bad. I didn't check the date code on them or anything like that. I'm, I'm pulling down the road no matter what. I got, I'm got, i prepared for failure. Well, sure enough, it happened. Usually when you're prepared, things don't happen. When you're, this time I was prepared and things happened. Look at this chunk of tire that came out here. Now that came out, hit the, tail, hit the, the fender, made a god-awful noise. I pulled over to the side. Sure enough, I see the tire is about ready to go. I was able to limp it. I was only about 15 miles into coming back. I was about just over 100 miles away from home. And so I found a parking lot, a nice quiet parking lot in the shade. And lo and behold, the five and five one four and a half pattern is typical in a lot of five bolt pattern trailers. And that's what I had for a spare. That got us down the road a little bit further. So I was changed out it, put the new spare on it. I'll show you that. Put the new or my spare tire off my regular boat trailer on there. Got down the road a little bit further and I was probably about oh, 35 miles from home and I hear the other tire making a racket let me show you that you guys are gonna love this look how much of this tread is missing on this tire hope you can see that look at that that has peeled out all the way around the tire so about the last 30 miles from home I had to do about 45 miles an hour because when the tire starts to come apart and you got these old aluminum fenders like this, look what it did to that. It just curled it, curled it big time. So as you can see, that tire made it home, but barely. I would almost wish I'd have had two spare tires. I'd have changed it out. Chances are my Jeep spare might would have fit. But over here, as you can see, I put on my regular boat trailer from my other boat trailer or other tire off my other boat trailer on here that got me home so let's take a little tour of this beast here's one of the main reasons I bought it there's a 140 horse Merc Cruiser in here that is looks fairly clean uh, a lot of these things you'll see pretty greasy pretty nasty this one's all intact other than the dipstick which that worries me a little bit because that dipstick right there missing can let a little bit of water get into things and things are rusty but i think i'm gonna hook a battery up to it see if it'll do anything at all first thing i'm gonna do is check see if it turns over here's the other little gem i got it's got the whole outdrive intact and the typical strap that holds it up because the hydraulics leak over time so we got the outdrive we got an easy loader trailer which is kind of a interesting little trailer in design the way it's put together and I kind of, I'm kind of liking on it uh, a little bit. 
because I want to straighten those fenders back out. I'm gonna put some regular trailer tires underneath there. But look at the little baby moon hubs on there. It's got the bearing buddy hole through it. Pretty slick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this trailer. I'm gonna modify this thing a little bit. I'm gonna take this winch off. I'm gonna put me an electric winch there. And I'm gonna put me a battery box on this thing and I'm gonna use this to go and rescue boats without trailers. And it does have a surge brake on it. It does have brakes in the rear axle. Has a lot of good amenities. Just got a little flaky paint and some rust, but a little wire wheel and a little Rust-Oleum paint. And that'll look like brand new again. But this will handle quite a variety of boats, I believe. And uh, I can go rescue boats and haul them off for people. Get them out of the yard for them. Even if they don't have a trailer. Especially if I got some salvage value here on with a motor or motor parts or I'll drive and stuff like that. So that's why I brought it home. Um, I'll look it over. It's hard to say if this thing's ever been winterized. I hope it had the last time it got used. Because if it did, that means the block won't be cracked, which would be a plus. I'm gonna check and see if it turns over. There's a lot of garbage in here I gotta get rid of. So I'm gonna make that go away before I start getting in here and start messing with the motor. But it looks like a little bit of fun. And then once I strip it down, I'll go dump this boat at the landfill, just like I did the other three I had here. And then I'll have me a trailer available. Look at this homemade contraption for holding up the front end. Homemade or not, it's actually a pretty sturdy little setup, and I'm not—I'm digging on it. It's going to have a platform that I can put my winch right on, I believe. And I think what I'll do is I'll slide this thing forward a ways. That way I can haul a longer boat on here and dispose of a longer boat when necessary. But yeah, the fenders, this is some... These fenders are kicking it old school, no doubt. No doubt at all. But yeah, it's, a, it's got lights just about everywhere. Front of the fender, back of the fender. Actually, I gotta straighten those fenders out. You can see it got bent up. And you'll see on this other side here, when that doggone thing. Hey, Riley, hey, Riley, can you say hi? Say hi to everybody. Uh, she won't say hi. Uh, this fender here also got bent up, as you can see, when that tire blew. But I kind of like this size tire, 13 inch tire. So I think I'll get me some 10 inch or some uh, 13 inch 10 ply tires. That'll do all the work I need to do. Plus it keeps things kind of low to the ground, uh, which is what I kind of want when you go to load a boat up. But I'm gonna see how this here articulates. These are designed to pivot like this, which will get me almost right down on the ground, which will be perfect. But yeah, that's the beast I drug home for a hundred bucks. Yes, it's going to cost me some more money to get rid of it, but I'm hoping I can uh, salvage a bunch of parts. I know I got more than $100 worth of parts here. So, but yeah, so when you go to go to old boat, uh, old boat and or old trailer or any kind, make sure you take enough stuff with you. Now, the other thing I'm going to do going forward, which would be beneficial, which I could have used yesterday, was an auxiliary set of lights because then. Because typically in these old trailers, the lights aren't going to be working. The wiring is usually jacked up pretty bad. But it would be nice to have something I could plug in and run down the trailer or run over the top of the boat, just like they do for tow trucks, and have a couple lights hanging back there so I could be legal that way. Uh, plus, it'd be safer. But uh, well that's the beast. That's what I drug home. And. Uh, like I said, you can't you can't be too prepared when you're dragging stuff home. There, here again, I was about a hundred and uh, what was it, 105 miles away, roughly, is where I went to get this from where I live. And uh, it's always a chance to, if you're going to get something like this, what you're going to get into, uh, if it, what's going to work, what isn't going to work, what's going to make it home. That's uh, look at this. I got boat cleats right here. There mildly okay i'm gonna pull those off those just have three or four screws i'll pull those off i can use those on something else who knows what maybe i'll put a dock down on my little pond and you know i might have to tie up my little 12 foot paddle boat next to it <laughs> i'm gonna see if the motor's stuck or not if the motor's not stuck that's uh winning battle number one uh if it's not stuck then i'm gonna put some marble mystery oil down the cylinders just to kind of make sure things are all uh loosey-goosey in there so i don't mess up anything when i start to roll it over and then we'll check for spark if I got spark and I got a starter that'll turn it over, I've got an electric fuel pump and a gas can that'll see if this thing will actually run. And if it runs, winner, winner, chicken dinner. If it doesn't, 
I got a lot of parts. I'll check compression. First and foremost, check compression. No compression, don't mess with the rest of the motor. You've got good compression, go after it. Get everything else brought up to speed. You probably got a decent motor. We'll pull the plug out of the lower unit to see if there's any water. If water comes out, then it's kind of like, eh, the lower unit might be a little trash. We'll see. But if it comes out clean, no rust in the oil, I probably got a good lower unit, a backup unit for my boat or one I can sell. So, most cases, boat stands for bust out another thousand. This one here is going to stand for, I don't know what, break out another 10 tens for a hundred dollars. <laughs> fun, fun. Anyway, let's get after getting this thing cleaned out and see what we got. Stay tuned. Just wanted to show you the results of some of the power washing here. You don't need to sit here through the whole video, but you can see how the how nasty the top was over there. Let's go around here, you can really see it. You can see the difference here. What just a little power washing can do. So even if you find an old boat that looks like this, you might it might be salvageable. You can even look at the red strap here versus what's molded there. Made a big difference. So I'm gonna finish power washing it. You can see inside here the carpet actually don't look too bad. The floor is rotten. Don't fool yourself there. The floor is very rotten in spots, very soft. And this wouldn't be a boat I would restore, not even not even come close to it. But if you're looking for an old boat, there's some things to look for. Make sure the motor's got oil in it. Make sure the, the out drive shaft is going to do an inboard outboard. You can easily spin this. I don't know if you can see it here. But you see it's got a little bit of wobble to it. This shaft is a, the outdrive uh, shaft is a bent a little bit. It's hit something before. But that is very easily straightenable. I've straightened them before. But uh, yeah, we're going to get in here and finish power washing. The only reason I'm spending so much time cleaning it out right now is because I'm going to be in here uh, getting ready to pull this motor out. See if things work on it. And get this motor pulled. And go from there because this one's like once I pull the motor in the out drive and if there's any gauges up there worth salvaging I'll salvage those but then the rest of us is gonna go to the landfill then I'll have an empty trailer so we're gonna keep after it and uh, get the rest of our power washed out and we'll take a look at it afterwards okay done power washing as good as it needs to get on the inside like I said, you guys might think I'm crazy for power washing it, but I'm going to be crawling around in here, and I need all that nastiness out of here. I don't need to be crawling on top of it. But we're letting the water drain out. I'm going to let it dry out for a couple days, and then we'll go after whatever else I want to do to this thing. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. I'll get back to you on when I start pulling the engine out, pulling the uh, out drive off, because I have never pulled one out. I pulled one apart on a boat like this. Uh, I did it on a uh, OMC. But this one's a little different. I'm going to learn a lot about what I have on my current boat by doing this boat and taking it apart and seeing what it's all about. So, hope this was helpful. Like I said, you can't be prepared enough when you go to get an old boat and drag it home. You don't know what you're getting into. Uh, I'm still not fully in depth of what I'm getting into yet. But, like I said, I bought this for parts. I bought the trailer to use as a trailer to rescue other boats. So, it's going to do what I need it to do. And like I said, it's 100 bucks. Can't complain too much. I can put a little into it and still not be out any money. So, this is what the donkey drug home. Donkey. Boat. Boat. So, 
Uh, don't let fear rule your life, folks. Get out there and do something fun. Enjoy life. Uh, it's for the taking. Make the most of it. Sometimes you might think I'm, I'm wasting my time doing some of this stuff, but it's something I enjoy doing, so is it really a waste of time if you enjoy it? Think about it that way. Michael out. Have a good time, folks.